Last week, Republican Senator Marco Rubio, a self-proclaimed conservative champion of the working class, criticized a piece of legislation designed to make modest improvements to America's pitiful social safety net. The $3.5 trillion Biden plan isn't socialism, it's Marxism, he tweeted. Now, fear-mongering over both socialism and over Marx, of course, is a favorite right-wing pastime here in the U.S. Let's take a look at an ad from Senator Tom Cotton's re-election campaign last year. They fought and sacrificed to keep us free. But now socialism has taken over the Democratic Party. Socialism has devastated countries like Cuba and Venezuela. Socialism means less freedom, less opportunity, economic collapse, and police states. Make no mistake, socialism will wreck America and take away our freedoms. Tom Cotton is standing with President Trump to keep us free. America will never be a socialist country. I'm Tom Cotton, and I approve this message. More recently, in August, a Fox News poll ominously suggested that a majority of Democrats now favor socialism over capitalism. Capitalism versus socialism, Democrats are asked. 49 percent view view capitalism favorably, uh, 44 percent unfavorably. Uh, And now in terms of socialism, 59 percent view view socialism favorably, 31 percent have it unfavorable. Uh, Vivek. The numbers don't surprise you, but it's because capitalism has been lazy. People have to explain what socialism means. It's not what you get. It's not even the playing field. It's not vilifying rich people. People should bring up examples of what it would mean. So I absolutely agree that people should, quote, bring up examples of what socialism would mean. For instance, I'd like to hear Marco Rubio's explanation for why lowering prescription drug prices for seniors on Medicare is apparently a slippery slope to workers seizing the means of production. But while it's easy to laugh at the right screeching over creeping socialism, the truth is we on the left occasionally also overstate the prevalence of socialism in the U.S. We're sometimes too quick to look at some anti-capitalist content in a corporate magazine, or the same dubious polls that the right uses for its own propaganda as evidence that the political winds are shifting in our favor. Therefore, I think it's worth investigating what the American public today actually thinks about socialism. Now, with the usual caveat that polling is imperfect and frequently frequently vulnerable to manipulation, let's look at a few polls that are slightly more rigorous than the surveys on socialism run by Fox or by the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. Reputable research and polling organizations such as the Pew Research Center, Gallup, and Monmouth do suggest that on the whole, Democrats and younger people express warmer feelings towards socialism than their Republican and older counterparts. But there's no way to sugarcoat this. According to all of the aforementioned polls, in general, a majority of Americans are not crazy about the word socialism. So in 2019, the Pew Research Center found that 55% of Americans had a negative impression of socialism compared to the 42% that expressed a positive view of socialism. By contrast, around 65% of people surveyed said that they had a positive view of capitalism, while only a third said that they viewed capitalism negatively. Similarly, just last year, 57% 57 of respondents to a Gallup poll 53% of respondents to an NBC News Wall Street Journal poll and 57% of respondents to a Monmouth poll said that they had a negative opinion of socialism. But here's part of the problem. If you ask 10 different Americans what socialism is, you'll probably get 10 different answers. And in fact, Pew Research followed up their survey by doing exactly that. They asked their respondents why they did or did not like socialism and unsurprisingly got wildly divergent answers. As their report stated, quote, for many Americans, socialism is a word that evokes a weakened work ethic, stifled innovation and excessive reliance on the government. But for others, it represents a fairer, more generous society. So some of the respondents who said that they opposed socialism said that they didn't like it because it was authoritarian. Others said that they didn't want the U.S. to end up like Venezuela. Now, on the other hand, 
some of the people who said that they liked socialism cited public schools and libraries as examples of socialism or said that they admired Denmark's cradle-to-grave social safety net. In other words, there was absolutely no consensus on what the word socialism meant. And to make things even more complicated, according to a socialist publication called Jacobin Magazine, most of the things mentioned by respondents, such as authoritarianism, libraries, or Denmark, are actually not socialism. So what should we make of all of this? If you ask me, I honestly don't think it matters that much. It, ma it doesn't really matter that the American public is conflicted about or even sometimes antagonistic toward the word socialism. But by the way, after the McCarthy era, the Cold War, and approximately a century of pro-capitalist propaganda from the political class, the media, and pop culture, I'm actually pretty surprised that only 55% of Americans today say they have a negative opinion of socialism. But, but here's what I think is actually more interesting than Americans' feelings about socialism proper. It's the fact that the same polling firms that suggest that Americans are not fans of socialism also consistently show that significant percentages of Americans are fans of many of the policies that are associated with the person who's currently the most famous socialist in the country. That's, of course, Bernie Sanders. So, for example, according to Pew, 62% of Americans say they favor raising the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. 63% say that the government has a responsibility to provide health care coverage for all. And 63% support free public college. Now, according to Gallup, 61% of Americans think that the wealthy pay too little in taxes and 52% of Americans, which is roughly the same percentage that said that they oppose socialism, actually support the idea of very heavy taxes on the rich. So when we're talking about things like health care for all, a jobs guarantee or a living wage, it might not matter all that much whether the right or the left calls these policies socialism. As Adolf Reed once put it, quote, you can call it socialism if you want. You can call it left Keynesianism. You can call it capitalism with a human face. You can call it Teddy Pendergrass if you want to. The point is that in terms of achievable public policy, we're still a long way off from when it'll be necessary for us to actually spend time splitting hairs over what exactly socialism is. In the meantime, opinion polls have given us a rough blueprint for where we should be concentrating our fights. Bernie-style public investments pull well with the public, the goal for the left and for progressives, as always, is to actually make them policy. I think Teddy Pendergrass might be a less polarizing uh, name for it. So <laughs> easy Teddy, to get on board with that. Teddy Pendergrass for all. Right. Yeah, exactly. Who would oppose that? <laughs> but actually, Paul, I, I'm curious to think or I'm, I'm curious to, to hear um, whether you what you think of politicians like Bernie Sanders and India Walton calling themselves democratic socialists, because I, I, I do want to make clear, I don't think that, you know, Bernie or, or India Walton should be hiding the fact that they're socialists. Right. And I actually think that they have done a lot to kind of destigmatize, de especially Bernie has done a lot to destigmatize that word. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I still don't feel like it's the most important fight. Um, I, I do right. sometimes think that there's too much hand wringing from both the right and the left about like, oh, this new poll about millennials and socialism came out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's an interesting question. Like, I honestly think Bernie and India Wallen have, have handled it kind of as good as they could. And I think with, for someone like Bernie, there was no way he was ever going to run from the label. And, mm -hmm. you know, he, he didn't run from, from it. But, you know, you don't have to start every sentence by saying, as a democratic socialist, you know. So I think it's more important that, you know, people associate you with Medicare for all or, jobs guarantee then immediately associate, associating you with the name uh, of socialism or that or that label. But I think it is a question that, you know, in the future, you know, socialists that are running for public office are going to have to deal with because, you know, at a certain point, you can't run from the label and you shouldn't. But I think it's a question of how much you emphasize it, how much does that matter? And of course, it kind of matters also like what district you're in, how much you might want to emphasize it or not. Um, but, it, you know, I think like during both presidential campaigns, I, you know, I think it would be accurate to say that most people, if you if you ask them, like, say one word you associate with Bernie, I think more people would say healthcare or Medicare for all than socialism. And I think that's kind of where we would want to be at. 
The other thing is, um, you know, obviously, as we've seen from conservatives, they're going to call anybody, you know, right. left of them socialist anyway. Uh, again, you know, Marco Rubio saying that Biden's <laughs> Biden's reconciliation bill is not just socialism, but is Marxism <laughs> is. Um, uh, I, I mean, I, I actually think that uh, the Republicans are sort of inadvertently helping to destigmatize socialism because they're kind right. of like the boy who cried wolf at this point, you know, mm -hmm. like they're saying that, I mean, if, if anything and everything is socialism, then like it doesn't really function as an effective boogeyman anymore, I don't think. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Um, and yeah, and I think that also speaks to like the reason you shouldn't run from it is like they're going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And you know that. But again, I think it's like you don't have to feel you don't have to emphasize it in every sentence or every speech you're making. Um, again, it should just be more focused on what these policies are filling in. Like, what do we actually mean by this? If you like this video from The Jacobin Show, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks.